news brief. Sources speaking to the South Korean publication MAIL, business newspapers say that Amazon, Comcast, and Electronic Arts have each submitted initial bids for Nick Corp, the holding firm that houses Nexon. That initial report, spotted by Reuters today, cites investment banking sources for the information. But Reuters notes that all parties involved either declined to comment or did not respond to requests for comment. If true, that would mean that the three companies joined the likes of Netmarble, Tencent, and the private equity fund Pick Partners as parties rumored to be interested in picking up Nexon after the company's founder Kim yun expressed interest in selling his 98. 64 controlling stake in the company, Netmarble, in particular, is reportedly after Nexon in part, due to concerns about the company falling into the hands of that overseas owner. We believe that the tangible and intangible value of Nexon is a very important asset for the country, said a statement from NTMNBLEA this year. If Nexon is sold to an overseas firm, the Korean game industry and the ecosystem could be damaged, and its competitiveness weakened. The Gunnar Sutri Job Board is the most diverse, active and established board of its kind for the video game industry. Here is just one of the many, many positions being advertised right now. Location, Pasadena, California. Embodied is looking to add a talented and creative player, as see a right of a growing technical team. Responsibilities include qualifications, excellent communication skills, both verbal and written, fluency in a programming language, O unity experience a place, O C R C pound key experience a place, knowledge of version control software a place, education. Bachelor's degree are equivalent experience in computer science. Embodied is creating robots to help make the world a better place. WWW. Embodied. Me. Come join us and make an impact in people's lives. Interested? Apply now. Whether you are just starting out, looking for something new, or just seeing what's out there. The Gunnar Sutri Job Board is the place where game developers move ahead in their careers. The Mo Sutra's Job Board is the most diverse, most active, and most established board of its kind in the video game industry, serving companies of all sizes, from indie to triple. Looking for a new job? Get started here. Are you a recruiter looking for talent? Post jobs here. The Game Makers, organizers of the 2019 Game Developers Conference Air Place Tour, announced that scheduling for the all node AD mentoring program is now live and ready for you to use. This is a brand new program intended to help encourage game development professionals to continue and grow in their personal careers. And you can take advantage of I try to now be logging into the DD, connect matchmaking tool and selecting a mentoring session type that meets your needs. Mentors, comprised of seasoned professionals across all sections of the industry, will be matched with you via the system. And meetings will take place in the DD mentoring lounge located in the South Hall Expo. With pound key as far as 6 Session formats include available tour summits, conference summits, conference all access pass holders, available tour expo as pass holders, to allow as many DD attendees as possible to participate in the program. Only one session selection may be made. New sessions will be added each week prior to DD, so check back in for more options. Continue planning out while you are GTC 2090 experience, while the official Tech 2019 schedule builder, which continues to add new talks every week. Bring your team to GD, 
register a group of 10 or more and save 10% in conference passes. Learn M-O-R-A-H-E-R-A. For more details o n t d c 2000 on 19 visit the show's official website or subscribe to regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, OS, God Art Sutra and DD are sibling organizations under parent company Informa. The folks Discord snuck in here today at the end of 2018 to announce something. We raised $150 million in another round of funding, led by Green Oaks Capital, the company which the new investment values at $2.05 billion seems to be riding high after the recent full-fledged launch of its own in-client game store, replete with early access system and an attractive 90 tenths of shares split in depth favor. It now claims a global user base of over 200 million. Prior investor Tencent also put some money into this funding round, alongside FirstMark, IVP, Technology Opportunity Partners on Dindex Ventures. Nintendo President Shintaro Furukawa has suggested the company might one day move away from home console development as technology changes. In a recent interview with Nikkei, translated by Nintendo Everything, the recently appointed president, who replaced Atsumi Kimishima back in June 20, it is stressed that flexibility is just as important as ingenuity in the business world, and that Nintendo must be able to adapt as the games industry evolves. Speaking more properly, he explained the company will always strive to offer people around the world innovative and unique ways to play games. But that might not always mean building hardware like the Nintendo Switch and way. We are not really fixated on our consoles. At the moment we are offering the uniquely developed Nintendo Switch and its software and that's what we are basing how we deliver the Nintendo experience. That being said, technology changes. We will continue to think flexibly about how to deliver that experience as time goes on, commented Furukawa. It has been over 30 years since we started developing consoles. Nintendo's history goes back even farther than that. And through all the struggles that they faced, the only thing that they thought about was what to make next in the long term. Perhaps our focus as a business could shift away from home. Console's flexibility is just as important as ingenuity. You can hear more from Furukawa by checking out the full interview. Over on Nintendo Everything, it's well worth a read. Ubisoft announced that it's making changes to the controversial Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLC, which came under fire recently. This follows the apology Ubisoft issued last week regarding the DLC, which presented a mandatory in-game relationship rendering on romantic decisions the player made, whether to pursue relationships with men or women regardless of playing as Alexios or Cassandra. No, the content of the DLC was initially going to remain unchanged. But an updated forum post seems to indicate a shift in direction. After hearing player feedback and discussing within the development team, we are making changes to a cutscene and some dialogue in Shadow Heritage to better reflect the nature of the relationship for players. Selecting a non-romantic storyline, the post reads, this changes, along with renaming a trophy achievement are being made now and will be implemented in an upcoming patch. We have also been carefully looking at the next episode, Bloodline, to ensure the paths that players experience mirror the choices they make in-game. It's worth noting that the player character is still locked into the decisions of the DLC, but the language around the event is being changed, as well as the nature of the relationship. Still. It's a welcome improvement that the community seems to be content with. Additionally, the gay and lesbian alliance against the defamation blood have also made 
a separate post addressing concerns over the DLC, explaining that it has been in communication with Ubisoft about the DLC. This comes in response to Assassin's Creed Odyssey's nomination for the Outstanding Video Game Award, a category that seeks to celebrate interactive experiences that include authentic and impactful LGBTQ characters, or storylines, hey devs, just a quick heads up today, that if you are thinking of bringing children with you while you attend DD 2000, on 19 next month, be advanced deadline to register for the program as next Monday, February 18th, registration is handled on a first-come, first-served basis.